Getting more use out of your phone is the name of the game. I'm a big fan of using phones to replace laptops when we work on the go. As our phones have gotten more powerful, that means more and more content creation work can be done from our pocket computers. I've covered a few tips and tricks videos on mobile video editing, but audio is my original passion. Podcasting, interviewing, radio style journalism, they're all surprisingly easy to accomplish from a phone and even from a mid-ranger phone, those are plenty powerful to chew up some long form audio content. Here's a sliding scale from the cheapest to the most professional for podcasting on your phone. As a starter, you can just use your phone, just the phone, literally nothing else. Don't plug in another thing. The thing about recent phone microphones, they're pretty good for making phone calls, even in noisy conditions. Now this won't be the prettiest mic to capture music or singing, but spoken word and in interviews, yeah, they're designed for that kind of audio capture. And just like an old school memo recorder, you can talk directly into the phone and you can kind of aim it out reporter style if you want to chat with a guest. If you want to get a little fancier and reduce some of the handling noise, you can pop your phone on like a little tripod and use that as a grip, or you can just set it down as a base in front of you and the person you're talking to. Now for editing, you might only need the phone speakers, but I think it's probably a better idea to add some cabled earbuds. That way you shouldn't have to worry about latency over Bluetooth while you're editing, and you should be able to monitor while recording depending on the app you like to use to record. Again, that's maybe not a built-in memo or voice notes app, something that came with your phone, but other audio recording apps can handle that kind of monitoring decently well. Stage two, we're stepping up and adding a microphone. Now, it's not difficult popping on a little mic or two. We can pick a microphone to better handle the environment you might be recording in, or we can grab a lavalier or two so the participants can keep their hands free. The cool thing about mobile podcasting is producing conversations in live conditions. Now, depending on the topic, you might want a quiet studio location, or you might want the background to have a sense of the energy around you. I'm a real big fan of labs for that kind of use where the mic is on your speaker, but is still picking up a decent wide feel of the environment. A good single cabled lab should be decently inexpensive. It's a real shame that we didn't push back harder against manufacturers getting rid of headphone jacks on our smartphones that was a great way to easily add an audio input, but I digress. And there are some respectably affordable ways to add two microphone inputs to a phone. Companies like Comica and Rode have made little mini interfaces just for low power cabled microphones. And they'll helpfully include headphone outputs to monitor your recordings. Of course, at that point, you probably will want to step up to more robust audio editing software. There are a handful of fun apps on Android. This video is not a comprehensive guide on all of those apps. But personally, I've used Audio Evolution the most on Android. I'm literally using it right now. The app itself is a little plain, but I like it for quickly recording, cutting, and mixing when I'm out in the field. Stepping up to stage three, our top tier interfaces and wireless options. Now the cool thing about more powerful phones with USB-C ports, you should be able to plug in more demanding USB audio interfaces. You can pack and carry a more professional looking setup, bring some microphones, pop them on mic stands, good broadcast style equipment, and run the whole setup from a phone. And this is not a new thing. I've done a lot of remote recordings this way for a while now. And even though we're talking about a setup with more parts, it is really handy having the final recording storage solution come in in something so small. Cutting a laptop out of the equation makes it a bit easier to carry other bulkier parts. Now, if you have access to a USB audio interface and some broadcast mics, you're good to go. You pop in the USB-C cable and you're ready. But the most exciting segment for me right now is this new generation of prosumer wireless hardware. I've been reviewing little transmitters and receivers for a couple years now, but these newer solutions are easier to use. They're a little more resistant to wireless interference and a couple 
even feature local recording as a safety feature. Specifically, the new DJI and this, this is the Rode Wireless Go 2, the transmitters have built-in storage and record a backup locally in case there are problems with the wireless signal. For almost all of my videos now, I might not even connect the receiver to my camera anymore, and I just record directly to the, to the transmitter, and then I sync my audio in post. These transmitters often have built-in microphones now, or you can add a lavalier if you don't want the Star Trek communicator badge look, but I don't understand why people wouldn't want that because, I mean, I think that looks pretty cool, right? You just like a little, make it so badge, I tap it. That's not how those work at all. Now we are moving up the food chain. These options are a little more spendy, but a pair of transmitters and a receiver for around 300-ish dollars is really inexpensive compared to what real audio professionals use per channel. I've been using the Rode version for a while now, and they're easily some of the best bang for buck wireless mics I've ever used at any price tier. These really have changed up how I work on podcasts and streamlined some of my video production. Now, a couple quick notes on finishing your audio production. Here's the deal. Working mobile, a lot of folks act like if you can't create the whole thing from beginning to finish from scratch on your phone in the field, then you shouldn't do anything on your phone out in the field. And that's not really how we work. That's not how we work on laptops when we're traveling. I'm not building a bunch of graphics and assets when I edit videos out at a trade show. I build those first at home and then I save them to the laptop when I wanna work remote. If you have a format in mind for your interview or your podcast, have those audio assets ready before you travel, and then it's really easy just dropping in your interview audio to mix that project down. You just align all the little pieces. It's, it's almost like paint with audio now. I'm not saying you can't create that stuff. You can source audio sound effects and bumpers. You can make those bumpers and ads and other elements on the phone too, but it's gonna take a little longer to find all the tools you might want to use as developers haven't taken phones as seriously as desktop and laptop software. And you also might want to invest in LumaFusion. Even though it's a video editing app, it's proven invaluable for being able to quickly edit video clips and then I can dump that edited timeline into an audio file that can then drop into an audio editing app. And lastly, just as a place to start, you know, what phones might be best for podcasting on the go? From my experiences, if you're looking for phones with headphone jacks, so you wanna use that as an input so you can monitor or to connect another microphone, I'd dig up an older phone like the LG V50, or I'd start looking at Sony Xperia's starting with the Xperia 1 Mark II. Even though they're older, they're still plenty powerful. I had my V50 upside down. They're still plenty powerful for cutting up audio. Audio is not quite as demanding as 4K video processing. You know, a phone like the V60 was more powerful than the V50, but that phone would attack all of the audio with really heavy-handed noise reduction, filtering, and processing. If you wanted any sense of the audio in your environment, it would try to squash just smush out any background noise, and sometimes that would make you sound like you were underwater. the V50 audio processing was a lot less destructive. And I also have to throw a shout out to the newer Pixels, not necessarily for connecting all these other bits, but the built-in recorder app, not just for how audio is organized, but for the absolutely brilliant transcription that happens on device. It's a leap forward for speech to text recognition. And if you need fast notes after an interview, it's written all out for you in almost real time. It's just a stunning feature to use when you see it in action on a cheaper Pixel 6a. I'm such an old audio nerd. Watching a phone write out what you say that quickly and that accurately 
it still looks like magic to me. There's a mobile solution for just about every interview and podcast situation you might want to run. You can just record and you can bring all that audio and edit it on another computer, or you can do some of the editing on the phone and then finish it on another computer, or you can fully mix down and publish everything, the social media, your website, your podcast host. It's really up to you how far you want to take it. The phones are crazy powerful these days. You don't have to worry about them keeping up with mobile recording. You just have to practice a little to get the hang of the workflow you want to use. And thank you for coming to my Tech Talk. As always, thanks so much for all of the sharing, subscribing, support on this channel has been absolutely fantastic. If you're clicking on links in the descriptions below, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is the coolest collection of audio nerds in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, now on the Mastodon. I'm really happy to be over on the Mastodon. Definitely check me out there. And I will catch you all on the next video.